Hello and welcome to In the Classroom, an educational podcast making teaching and learning more transparent. My name is Benjamin Stewart at BenjaminLStewart.org. Today is January 24th, 2021, and today I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about some of the technologies that I use in creating video and audio for my students. So we're going to get into the weeds a little bit, get into some of the details in terms of technology, some of the configurations that I use, and some basic functionality of some of the tools that I use. Uh, This is really directed towards those teachers who may not have a lot of exposure to some of these technologies. I want to keep it fairly simple. Um, But I think uh, it's a very easy way to go about creating content uh, when you're flipping the classroom, when you're creating content, making it available online for your students. If you're interested in today's topic, feel free to check out the show notes. I'll leave the the link in the description. And uh, all of the content of all of the podcast episodes can be found at BenjaminLStewart.org. All right, so... When I go about capturing uh, audio or video, I actually use the same tool. I use OBS. And if some of you are into streaming, you might also find Streamlabs OBS also useful. They're pretty much the same, but Streamlabs makes it a little bit easier to stream if you want to push your video out in real time to YouTube, Facebook, uh, Periscope. Streamlabs makes it a little bit easier to do that, and you have the option to uh, view the online chat within the app, and that's that's kind of a nice feature. If you're not streaming and you're just interested in creating a recording, uh, then OBS uh, is uh, a good option as well. There are a lot of OBS Studio videos in YouTube that explain how to use it. Uh, so I'm not going to go into how to capture the the video uh, here in this video, but it's very easy to do. And again, there's already a lot of good videos uh, out there uh, if you're interested in learning how to create a video. The second software that I use, let me go back to the main page here, is Caden Live. So I use OBS Studios typically to create the, the uh, video. And then I bring that video into Caden Live. Caden Live is open source; it's free, and I just use a fraction of the 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 options that are available. But you'll see here that I have an image file, I have an MP3 file, and I have a video file that I brought into this particular um, instance of Caden Live. This is actually what I use. Uh, to create each of the episodes for my podcast and or videos for my YouTube channel. So you'll notice here, and I'll select some of the the video here towards the middle of the broadcast. So when I go into the beginning of my episode here, you'll notice I have the, my image file, and then I have the intro music. Hello and welcome to In the Classroom. And then I go into the actual broadcast. So what you hear here at this... Hello and welcome to... At this point, this is the actual video that I created in OBS. So this is nice because you can use transitions. I I like the uh, dissolve. If you go under compositions and select dissolve, you can bring those uh, transitions in. The fade in and the fade out. And for the audio, it's very easy to, with these slider bars, move this up and down to fade in and fade out. You can also use uh, the gain. I use that quite a bit. If you go under color and image correction, you have either a mute feature, which is sometimes useful, and then a gain feature. You'll notice here I have gain set at 20%, so this ducks behind the actual intro. Hello and welcome to In the Classroom. And right, so the music, uh, it kind of fades out. It, it uh, decreases down to 20% as I begin speaking, and then it fades out here. So it's very easy to set this up, uh, and, and these are some of the, the filters and the effects that I use. And there's many, many other additional uh, effects that you could use. But um, here, if you want to slice... Cut and slice is very easy. With You can hit X to cut. If I want to cut this, 
I bring the the bar over and then I can cut here <clears throat> select and then remove whatever I want and uh, so yeah it's very straightforward in terms of uh, you know getting the job done and uh, making some simple edits I don't make I don't spend a lot of time in the edits but I will cut and splice um, if I make a mistake or if there's a long pauses I can easily reduce those and then the the effects, the fade in, fade out, both from the audio and for the uh, the visual component of uh, of the edits. But you'll notice here that I basically follow the same approach whether I'm making an audio or a video. So the only difference here is I will typically set this up as if it were a, a video, even if I'm going to only create an, an audio. And I'll show you an example. Let me close this. And open it up again. The last episode that I created was actually a for my podcast. It was audio only. But in Caden Live, it actually looked like a video. This is what it, it looked like. The only difference here is when I rendered the podcast, I selected MP3 right here. So I rendered the file as an MP3, but notice here you can also render it as an MP4 if you want to upload it to uh, to a video hosting site like YouTube. Right. So basically, the only two settings I use are MP4 for video and MP3 for uh, for uh, audio. Again, there are many other options available. Um, here I have it set as an output file. I actually have all of my videos synced with a service called sync.com. And so this just helps when I create a video in OBS, when I bring it into Caden Live, all of the files, the raw files and the edited files, the files that are being rendered, all reside in uh, my account sync.com. Now sync.com is a paid service. This is the only service here that uh, that I use that I do pay for but if you're using a Microsoft 365 account or Google account it's pretty much the same concept the idea here is that everything is synced automatically so that if I were to begin a project on one computer if I'm at home for example and then I want to continue working on the same project from the office then this allows me to do that I just set up both uh, both apps you know the app at home and then the app in my office to uh to look for all of the the, the videos in uh, sync.com and then I'm able to bring that uh that workflow together and be able to move around from uh you know from home to the office as as I need to so again this just makes it very easy to create content create video and audio and uh these days, as we are getting into more online scenarios with our students and uh, we're creating content or maybe recording a class, I'll spend a lot of time recording classes and I'll use OBS to do that. Uh, this just makes it very easy uh, to, to make all of that happen. So again, I use OBS to capture the video from my computer. Another good option is streamlabs.com I use Caden live as a video editor and audio editor and in my case I upload audio to uh, my podcast and anchor this is a free service that pushes it out to a lot of different pod catchers and I upload videos to a YouTube channel you probably also want to think about a syncing service if you're interested in creating the same workflow and you want the option of being able to uh, work from different computers and being able to start projects and finish them at another location, then you would need to uh, seek some sort of syncing service and uh, set it up so that uh, that will allow it to happen. So I hope this helps. This is again for teachers who are uh, maybe new to some of the technologies available. Feel free to check out YouTube for additional uh, videos on how to use OBS, Streamlabs, and Caden Live for that matter. Uh, these uh, are very uh, 
flexible tools to be able to produce content for our students. And um, feel free to, to check these out. If you're currently using other services, other apps, other tools for creating content with your students, I'm interested in hearing some of your insights, some of your experiences. If you want to reach out to me at my Twitter handle at BNLEEZ, feel free to do so. If you have any comments also and like to like to leave those comments in the show notes at BenjaminLStewart.org. Uh, I would also be curious to see how others are creating content uh, depending based on their own educational context. This has been In the Classroom, an educational podcast making teaching and learning more transparent. Thanks for listening.